Amazing. Here we are, week eight. Just about finished with the material for the course. The final part of your term paper, which can't be overlooked, is it's great to do research, get to the root cause, come up with a solution, get it approved. But in a lot of cases where it breaks down is when it comes time to actually implement the idea. So I want to talk to you a few um, aspects of implementation and evaluation that are important for you in your business career to be successful when you're implementing any kind of change. So the last step, we need to plan, implement, and evaluate. And that really is the definition of what project management is. And this is actually an area that I spent a significant uh, portion of my career in corporate America was work working in this, the whole side of managing projects and actually making them happen. And so I want to go through and show you a few tools that you have to assist you in the process and talk about some of the things that are necessary to be successful. So project management includes a lot. You know, the previous slide showed three major topics, but there's really an awful lot involved in project management. You know, you've got budgets involved, timing, getting groups together, organizing. Usually on a major project, it involves getting cooperation from multiple um, departments within the company, people who do not necessarily report to you or to your boss, but they're critical in order to have successful implementation. So effective communication skills, interpersonal relationships, uh, how to, you know, convince someone that it's in their best interest to help you make this happen. There's a lot involved in project management. And there's a uh, a whole series of classes you can take on project management. You can get certified in project management skills. I like this quote from Fred Brooks. You know, how do you end up having a project that's a year, you know, late coming in on that? And his concept there is one day at a time. And what's meant there is that you have to stay on top of your project every single day. If you don't, a day here, a day there, it adds up and all of a sudden you are way past due the original timeline. So some of the questions that you need to be concerned with with project management, you know, the first one always starts out, how long is it gonna to take to complete this project? And to get to the answer, you really have to divide it up and say, what are all the different tasks that make up the project and are any of the tasks, you have to complete one task before you can do this other task. So is there any dependent relationships that go on there? When I transferred a manufacturing um, uh, product line from Portland to Japan, I had to make up a list of all the individual tasks that were gonna be necessary to make that transition happen. It was uh, about 350 major tasks and a lot of subtasks on that that, that uh, we created in order to track and monitor the project. And so it'd be really nice to know of all those, like in the case of 350 tasks, if I have to monitor all 350 tasks every single day, that's a lot of work. But maybe there are some of the tasks on that list of 350 that if they take a day or two longer, I don't care. They won't affect the overall outcome of the completion date. And so it'd be nice to know which ones I can not completely ignore, but that I can kind of set off to the side a little bit and just monitor less frequently, maybe once a week. And so that really feeds into this next idea where we call critical items. These are the items that if they're delayed by, you know, one day, it causes the whole project to slip and move out one day. 
they're critical because if they don't happen exactly as planned, it will delay the project completion. And then the other thing that's uh, really important to know is who's working on which task? Who's responsible for each task? So that you know who the right person is to talk to, to touch base with, to make sure you're still on track. And then of course, what senior management always wants to know, are you gonna be finished on time? And are you gonna be finished, you know, on budget? Now the, the task I had of moving a manufacturing cell from Portland to Japan, we didn't finish on time. We finished ahead of schedule, significantly ahead of schedule. And we also did that and we were significantly under budget. And that could only happen, and believe me, we ran into several unexpected, you know, gotchas in the middle of that project movement. Uh, for those of you that have gone to Japan, you're probably aware that Japan is split. Half of the country uses US power, 120 volt, 60 cycle power. The other half of the country uses European power standards, 240 volts, 50 cycles. The two are not interchangeable. Unfortunately, the location we were setting up manufacturing in Japan was in the 240, 50 hertz part of the country. But being that we were manufacturing here in Portland, all of our equipment was designed to work 120, 60 hertz. We didn't realize that until we were almost ready to ship all the, the manufacturing equipment over to Japan. And so we really had to scramble. And so again, um, it, it was, we were even but with that unexpected thing, we were able to stay under budget and finish ahead of schedule. So Project, good project management tools really are a lifesaver. So there's a video I posted in the week eight section that you can watch. It's, uh, you know, how to understand project management in under eight minutes. Uh, it's a British video, but it covers some of the basics. So I encourage you when you get a chance to look at that video. Now the good news is that the project management software we have available today is really powerful and it can really help us to provide answers to these questions. What's the critical path? That's why I said earlier, those are the tasks that are super important to monitor and track because if anything goes wrong with that, it's going to affect the, the completion date. PERT analysis is an interesting thing. Uh, basically with PERT, and we'll see here in a slide or two now, it's a tool to help you uh, come up with what is the most likely time frame that a task will take. So you can have a pessimistic view as to how long it's gonna take, an optimistic view, a most likely and you combine those mathematically to come into what you expect and that's a better date to plan to than using either the pessimistic or the optimistic uh, you know for looking at your schedule so it's a tool to help you get to really a more realistic more likely time frame for your planning and Gantt charts as we'll see, the, the real power in a Gantt chart is that it gives you a tool to track progress, to see, are you on track? Is everything going according to schedule? Do we have any issues? It's a graphical tool, it was great. When I moved the manufacturing cell from Portland to Japan, uh, you know, we had some plotters that would print out, you know, large drawings. And so when I did the Gantt chart for that project, I had multiple pages taped together. It, the Gantt chart filled an entire wall of my office, but it gave me a really good way to visually stay on top of everything. 
Microsoft Project is used by a lot of businesses. There's, if you get the Office Professional version, it's included in that package. Most of the Office student versions and Office Home versions do not include Microsoft Project because it's really a business tool. But once you get out into corporate America, you'll find that in a lot of cases, uh, you already have access to Microsoft Project. So let's talk about the critical path method. So again, what is critical path? It's all those steps that are essential to stay on track because if any of them change at all, it affects the outcome. So if you see, this is a real simple example. What's shown in the red here, going through these tasks, it's going to take four days. Now going through this one task, it's only one day and this one's only three days. So this in red, this is the critical path. If any of these three tasks take an extra day, it will push the finish out a day. But this task that it has only one day in duration, it could change up to three days and it still would not change the end result. So the tools really that we have for project management help us to organize and manage the project, especially a complicated project like the one I was, uh, example I was giving. That's a lot to keep track of. And these tools make it a lot easier. So you're only spending a few minutes every day evaluating things and not spending eight hours a day just trying to stay on top of everything. Uh, let's see, so let's look at some examples. So I already said Microsoft Project, a lot of businesses have that. But if you're in a small startup business or you have a big project you're doing at home and you can't afford project to buy project because it's not cheap if you have to buy it, there are a number of, of free options actually. And you can go to this uh, website uh, this was published in, I believe, yeah, it says right there, June of 2018, so relatively recent. They may have updated a few things since then. So there are some options, free or low cost, uh, if you don't already have access to project. So let's look at an example. We're going to simplify this process that we're modernizing a shopping center. And some of the main things you can see, prepare architectural drawings, identify the new tenants, you know, select a contractor. Oh, we need to get building permits, do the actual construction, tenants move in. You know, there's actually probably 10 times this number of, of tasks, but at a real high level, this is what we've got. Then you see over here, the column predecessor. None means nothing has to happen before you can start preparing the architectural drawings. Now you could make the case before you prepare the architectural drawings, you need to select an architect. In that case, the predecessor for preparing the architectural drawings would be a task that is select the architect. But let's look at task C, develop the prospectus for tenants. Well, before we develop the prospectus, we probably need to identify the potential new tenants so that we know what we should put in the prospectus, who these tenants are, what kind of store it's going to be, and so forth. So we're saying that, and before we can prepare the prospectus for them, we really should have the architectural drawings. Can you imagine going to a potential tenant and saying, well, we don't know what it's going to look like yet, but are you interested? You know, of course, they'd want to see some architectural drawings. You know, is this going to be suitable for their business? So there's a number of things that have to happen. You can see there's three things here. Before we can select the contractor or get our building permits, we have to have the architectural drawings. So that's what's meant. The predecessor means that task has to happen before you can start working on this task. And then off to the side here, you can see the amount of time in weeks it would take to do that. 
So if you add up this column of time, all the weeks, you come up with, I believe it's 51 weeks. That's if you work on one task at a time, it would take that long. But some tasks can be done concurrently at the same time. So how do we know what we can work on at the same time and not get things out of sync? Well, that's where the critical path really comes in. And yeah, so I was right, it was 51 weeks. So here we take that information that was just shown up there and we can graphically display the relationships. As you'll see here, task C, which was developed the prospectus, requires that architectural drawings are developed. D was select a contractor. And again, we said before you can start on D, you have to have the architectural drawings and E was the building permits. And again, you have to have A done, the architectural drawings. So we have graphically described the relationships between the different tasks. And as you remember, our first two tasks didn't have any predecessors. So they could be, as soon as you say start, you can do A and B at the same time. Once you have it displayed graphically like this, you can easily see which ones you can do, you know, concurrently without having to worry about any impact on the schedule. So by definition, the critical path is when we look at those relationships and now we put time onto each of those activities and then see which is the longest path through the project. So I've highlighted in red here that when you add the times for each of these together, that this path, A to E, F, G, I, and then you're done, that's the longest path. And when you add up the times for those, it's only 26 weeks. So you can work on these other four tasks down here at the same time you're working on these and get the project finished in 26 weeks instead of 51 weeks. The only way that happens is if you have identified correctly which ones can be done at the same time. So PERT, as I mentioned earlier, is a way to come up with a more likely time for the uh, project, for the particular task, the, the duration. And this is done mathematically. So Here's an example. We have our estimated time. We're going to calculate that by taking the optimistic time, add to that the best guess time, multiply it by four, and then add to that the pessimistic time, and then divide the whole thing by six. So as you can see, here's the example. We say our best guess is we think it'll take 10 weeks, but you know, if things don't go right, it could push out to 14 weeks. But if we get a really fast turn, you know, if we, when we go to our vendor, they're slack and they have some extra time available, we could get it done in eight weeks. When you put it into the um, estimated time formula there shown above, it actually calculates, calculates out as 10.2 weeks, which is pretty close to 10 weeks, but two tenths of a week here and two tenths of a week there and when you've got a lot of tasks that can add up. And so that can really impact what your, the schedule is that you're going to commit to your boss, to your customer. And so this is a tool that can help you to provide a more realistic, more likely time to your whole project. So again, here's a table showing our tasks before, remember our predecessors and everything else. And we've gone through and come up with, okay, here's my estimates, optimistic, my normal best guess, and pessimistic. And then we come up with the expected times. And you can see like on F, our best guess was four, but when we run it through this is 4.5. That's a significant difference. Okay, here's the password for our quiz this week, MS Project. Remember, it is case sensitive, so capital N, capital S, capital P, you know, project. 
Gantt charts are another way of looking at the relationships other than uh, the critical path. Uh, it's with a Gantt chart we introduce into the scale of how things are displayed we have the time there so it makes it very easy to see the timelines when we should be starting a certain um, task when a task needs to be done and it will also show us the critical path the software that develops Gantt charts will automatically color code for you and show you what the uh, critical path is through this project. So here's a real simple example. You can see planning, product development, process validation, feedback, and finally to production. And you can see the relationship and up here, you know, the time scale. And so you can see that then if we start January 29th, then we're going to end, we're going to finish here, you know, December 2nd. And there's, you can change the, you know, there's a lot of different styles and formats for Gantt charts. You can turn the lines on and off that connect them. Uh, you can have it so they're color coded. So you put into this bar that is shown here a completion. So if you say this task is 50% complete, it'll color half of it, you know, from left to the middle would be solid. And then the rest of the way would show, you know, with the dots or whatever, indicating that there's still work to be done. But so you can very quickly look at it and get a gauge as to how far you are on each of the particular tasks. This happens to be, uh, you know, generated from Microsoft projects. So again, you can see it's got the arrows showing you what has to happen before. And again, you can turn those on and off. You can change things a lot. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. I used it uh, when we did that. We moved the manufacturing cell from uh, Portland to Japan. I also used it when I was hired on as the director of marketing at Shindaiwa to take a look at when we needed to launch our production of the next year's catalog based on all the things that had to happen. And uh, it was very useful for pointing out that uh, in previous years they had not been starting to work on the catalog soon enough, which is why it was always a scramble at the end to try and make things happen because they had never looked at it of all the steps that have to happen, the relationships and put in the times to see, okay, this project is going to take 26 weeks. And so we had better darn well get started now if we want to have this available in six months. Resources is another aspect of project management. I've got all these things, but on some of those tasks that we want to work on concurrently, they may utilize the same resource. And so the project management software will allow you to assign resources to particular tasks. And then it will show you, no, you can't use the production line A to do that task at that time because it's already been committed to another task at that time frame. So I'll show you where you have problems where you're double booking resources. Uh, let's see, anything else? And then that really kind of covers with the project management. Like I say, you know, there are courses, entire programs on project management. So I've only given you really the the proverbial tip of the iceberg. But the key takeaway I would have for you on this is one, there's tools to help you, but two, you have to stay on top of everything. You cannot assume, okay, this has been assigned to engineering and they'll have something back to me in two weeks. Then two weeks comes and you find out, oh, well, we were waiting for some more information from you. It's something where you have to determine, especially those critical path items, your 
you're touching base with the person responsible for making it happen on a daily basis you know perhaps even more often everything okay do you need anything one of the roles of the project manager uh, what i would tell my teams is that i was a demolition expert and so anytime they came up to a roadblock block that was preventing them from making progress they were supposed to contact me so I could blow it up and get it out of their way. And that's really true. As a project manager, sometimes your biggest contribution to the project is you know, eliminating things that get in the way of others doing the work that they're trying to do, whether it's budget, you know, purchasing, uh, you know, any number of things that come up that can slow it down and you may have to get involved in directly to make sure that it gets solved and resolved very quickly. But after all this hard work, you know, you come to the point of saying, okay, we, we made it happen. Were we successful? And how are we going to gauge that? Now, in the example I gave with transferring the manufacturing cell from Portland to Japan, I knew that we got it over there under budget ahead of schedule was it successful what were the metrics what what metrics could I use to determine if it's successful well in that case a manufacturing cell you would want it to actually produce the product that it's supposed to be producing so what was our production rate did it match what we planned quality you know, did we have the quality that we expected to have in Japan? What about costs? The unit costs, did we mean it? So we would establish a whole series of metrics to monitor now that we have turned the keys over to the new manufacturing facility, are we getting what we expected? Uh, let's see, kind of talked about that. Um, and that's really it. So for your paper, I'm expecting you to talk about how are you going to implement this? What kind of resources are going to be necessary? You're going to need engineering resources. You're going to need uh, an outside consulting firm on marketing issues. What are some of those resources it's going to take to implement it? And then what kinds of things would you monitor and track to see was the implementation of the project successful did it accomplish you know the solution that you selected to address that root cause has the root cause been fixed how are you going to know what are those metrics so i expect to see that in the paper those specific metrics that you want to monitor and evaluate to determine was this a success.